Jets goaltender Laurent Brissois makes a save on Detroit Red Wings' Luke Glendening on Friday night in Winnipeg. John Woods, the Canadian press, nothing seems to phase Laurent Brissois, not even another lengthy layoff. With Winnipeg Jets playing on consecutive days for the sixth time this season, the reliable backup goalie came up with another solid effort. Playing for the first time since Deck. 22, when he earned his first NHL shutout with a 40-save performance against the Vancouver Canucks, Brissois turned aside 33 of 35 shots to propel the Jets to a 4-2 victory over the Detroit Red Wings on Friday at Bell MTS Place. After watching Connor Hellebike make seven consecutive starts coming out of the Christmas break, Brissois showed no signs of rust and the Jets got him some early offensive support building a 3-0 lead. It is the type of effort the Jets have come to expect when Brissois' number is called, yeah, he's been unbelievable. So nice, when he's in net, to have that confidence in him to make big saves when we need him to and he did that tonight, said Jets center Brian Little, who provided the game-winning goal at 4.51 of the second period. He made some great saves, saved a breakaway at a key moment in the game. He's done that for us all season. He's playing great, Brissois has made 10 starts and made 11 appearances through 44 games this season, but there's a good chance he'll finish somewhere around 20 starts, which should help keep starter Connor Hellebusek fresh for the stretch run in the playoffs, so for a reasonably young goaltender in the NHL in terms of experience, he's figured the most important thing out. If you're not playing a lot of games, or you're not playing big minutes, you've got to make sure you're pushing yourself as hard as you possibly can in practice, said Jets head coach Paul Maurice. And you can't let the demons of how many starts am I getting or how much ice time am I getting affect how you push yourself in practice. So he's been, quietly, a good leader for our group. He practices really, really hard so when he gets into that game it's just a continuation of what he's doing. I think he's been just an outstanding acquisition for our team, Maurice has said repeatedly that his primary concern is to keep Hellebike in a rhythm, but having faith in the backup is critical in finding blocks in the schedule to get his starter some rest, he's going to get more starts based on play but also based on schedule and it will be easy to do, said Maurice. We've got a couple of really good goalies, Jets winger Brandon Tanave scored his 10th goal of the campaign just 13 seconds into the contest, converting a pass from Adam Lowry after Matthew Perot helped create a turnover on the forecheck, yeah, you can't get much quicker than that, said Little. That's always nice to start the hockey game like that, to get a kick goal and get everyone in the game early like that. It was pretty key for us, Jets captain Blake Wheeler extended the lead with two seconds left in the first period as his backdoor pass attempt to Ben Chirot was knocked into the net by Red Wings forward Thomas Van Eck. Little scored with the two teams playing four on four as his shot changed direction off Red Wings defenseman Mike Green. The Red Wings weren't about to go quietly though. Luke Glendening scored a shorthanded marker in the second period and rookie defenseman Dennis Kalowski added a power play marker at 6.50 of the third period, making it a one-goal game. Brissois made his most important save of the game at 8.40 of the third period, stoning Andreas Athanasiu with his left pad. I wasn't thinking much, didn't have a lot of time to think, said Brissois. Just came in and I kind of shaded to one side, gave him one side and then we went five hole and it kind of caught me off guard and I was just lucky to get a knee on it, if a guy has a clear tendency then we'll do a little bit of a scouting report. But I don't want to over anticipate, Kyle Connor, with his 16th goal of the season, rounded out the scoring with an empty netter with 59.5 seconds to go in the third period, capping off a three point game. It was kind of a gutsy performance, said Jets defenseman Josh Morrissey, who had five blocked shots in the contest. Probably not one for the entire 60 minutes that you'd use as your template at the start of the year. But, back to back in the NHL, obviously they didn't play, Thursday night, they were coming in here fresh. They're a fast team and I thought we did a pretty good job of just kind of grinding through the game, we knew that there was going to be times where they'd get some long zone time, I guess, and some pressure on us for some points, especially in that second period. I thought we did a reasonable job of handling it, and got some big saves from, Brissois, when we needed it. 
any win in the NHL, we'll take it. The Jets, who improved to 2-8-1-4-2, face the Anaheim Ducks on Sunday. The 500 club little school was the 500th point of his 12-year NHL career in his 798th NHL game, which prompted the center to take a brief stroll down memory lane, went by fast, said Little. Trying to think of the years over my career and up to this point and it seemed like it flew by. Hopefully, there's many more points to come. Little was quick to recall his first NHL point which came in his first NHL debut, a goal against Washington Capitals goalie Brent Johnson on October 5 of 2007. It was kind of fluky, like my goal tonight, said Little. It was my first game and I just kind of threw it out in front from behind the net and it banked off the goalie. I think it went off about five things before it went in. Pretty similar, Maurice was asked about the contributions Little continues to make, I'd say over the last two or three years Brian does whatever job we ask. He's been playing with young players, he's been a good example and a good mentor. He's another one of those guys tonight, he competed right from the start to the finish. And he does that every night. He's not underappreciated by the people here but I think because his numbers maybe aren't quite as high as they were a couple of years ago when he was playing with Blake Wheeler that you think his play has dropped off. But the fact is it hasn't. He's a better player now than he's ever been. The envelopes please with all NHL teams just past the midway point of the schedule, there's been plenty of buzz circulating around which players might have a leg up in terms of the year-end league awards. There are plenty of deserving candidates in all of the categories, but for the sake of debate and in some cases, argument, here are my choices for the major trophies based on where things stood at Game 41. Here we go. Hart Trophy Tampa Bay Lightning winger Nikita Kucherov gets the nod and not just for being the leading scorer on the best team in the NHL. In discussion, gifted winger Johnny Gaudreau has the Calgary Flames atop the Pacific Division and he's the heartbeat of the offensive attack, while Connor McDavid has been in on more than 50% of the goals the Edmonton Oilers have scored so his importance to his hockey club can't be questioned. McDavid was also a dominant force last season, but slipped on many MVP lists because of how the Oilers underachieved and missed the playoffs. Despite a coaching change in some tough stretches, the Oilers remain in the hunt for a playoff spot in the West and that will obviously bolster McDavid's candidacy. For the second year in a row, Avalanche center Nathan McKinnon is anchoring one of the most productive lines in the NHL. Yes, there could be some vote splitting, given how Miko Rontanen and Gabriel Landeskog are playing, but McKinnon is the guy driving the bus. Norris Trophy Flames captain Mark Giordano has a slight edge in the two-horse race with Morgan Riley of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Giordano might be 35 but he's playing some of the best hockey of his career at both ends of the ice. Riley has the edge in goals, is a sound two-way defenseman and he could easily be the guy with his name engraved on the trophy when all is said and done. But at this moment, Giordano is the front-runner for me. Chris Letang of the Penguins also warrants consideration. Vezina Trophy Nobody is running away with this category, but Pekka Rene of the Nashville Predators has my vote so far. Some folks weren't sure Rene would even hold on to his starting job this season after he was pulled early in Game 7 of the Western Conference playoffs against the Jets. Not only did Rene keep his job, he's playing at an elite level and is in contention for back-to-back -back Vezina trophies if he has a strong second half. John Gibson of the Anaheim Ducks is the biggest reason his team remains in the playoff race, while Riddich's rock-solid play can't be overlooked. Marc-Andre Fleury of the Golden Knights has been a workhorse and is one of the biggest reasons Vegas is among the elite teams in the West, leading the league in wins and shutouts but his save percentage is a tad low to be the frontrunner right now. Selk Trophy Penguins captain Sidney Crosby is known more for his offensive talent, but his two-way game is highly underrated. Crosby continues to produce at a high level, while doing a solid job in facing top-end competition on a nightly basis. It's time he starts getting recognized for his defensive ability. 
Despite missing 15 games due to injury, you can be sure Boston Bruins center Patrice Bergeron is sure to be involved in the conversation before all is said and done. Calder Trophy This one is a runaway, with Vancouver Canucks forward Elias Peterson at the head of the class. He has dealt with a pair of injuries, but has 22 goals and 42 points in 38 games and Peterson has done a fantastic job moving to center from the wing. Jack Adams Trophy One of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to this award is that voters often hand it out based on a team that wasn't expected to do much. It's okay to take that into consideration, but it's not fair to penalize teams at the top of the standings either. That's why I've chosen Tampa Bay Lightning bench boss John Cooper for this award, narrowly over Bill Peters of the Flames. The Lightning were in single-digit regulation losses at the midway point and were forced to play without Andre Vasilevsky for an extended period. Yes, the Lightning have an incredibly talented team, but keeping a talented cast of characters happy with ice time and playing at an elite level is no easy task and Cooper deserves some of the credit for the Lightning delivering a point streak of 16 games, which included an 8-game winning streak. As for Peters, he's immediately left his mark in his first season with the Flames. Despite having to replace starting goalie Mike Smith with David Riddich, Peters has got this group to buy in and they believe they can remain in the race for top spot with the Vegas Golden Knights and San Jose Sharks. Other candidates include Dauphin product Barry Trotz, New York Islanders, and Jets head coach Paul Maurice, who had his team atop the Western Conference through 41 games. 5 Things We Learn to Just Get the Job Done Jets backup goalie Laurent Brissois made his 10th start of the season and his lone regulation loss came in a relief performance. Extended time between starts doesn't seem to bother him, nor does a high-volume workload. Brissois' 9 wins eclipsed the total posted by Jets backups last season, 8, the 500 club Jets center Brian Little provided what proved to be the game-winning Goa, scoring on a 4-on-4 situation. His shot changed direction off Red Wings defenseman Mike Green for what was his 500th NHL point. It was also the 29th game-winning goal in 798 NHL games. Connor heating up Jets left winger Kyle Connor scored an empty net goal and added two primary assists for a three-point night. Since going 10 games without recording a point, Connor has three goals and six points during the past four games. Stepping in Jets defenseman Sammy Nicku drew in for Tyler Myers, lower body, day-to-day, -day, and was used mostly on the third pairing with Joe Morrow. Nicku, who suited up for the Jets for the first time since December 4, took 14 shifts for 12.51 of ice time, finishing with three blocked shots. Nicku lost control of the puck on the play that led to a breakaway for Wings speedster Andreas Athanasiu but he was bailed out by Brissois. The scared Jets forward Matthew Perot was taken into the boards from behind by Wings forward and St. Andrews product Darren Helm during the first period. Perot turned at the last second, but the hit was on the numbers. It was not a dirty play by Helm, but it probably should have been penalized. Perot went down the tunnel for further evaluation but only missed a few shifts and was able to finish the contest.